We've seen that when two firms produce the same product and compete on price, the equilibrium is that price will be equal to marginal cost. That's the extreme result of the Bertrand model. But when the firms produce differentiated products, that softens price competition, and they're able to produce at price above marginal cost. We now want to think about the choice of product differentiation. We want to think about the choice of your product characteristics as a strategic choice. And one of the first models to ever do that was the hoteling model. This model imagined that firms could choose a product characteristic that lies on the continuum between zero and one. So imagine, for example, you might choose how much sugar to put into the soft drink that you produce. You could choose to put no sugar in, a lot of sugar in, or anything in between. And so the amount of sugar you're putting into the product is the product characteristic you're choosing. And you know that consumers have different ideal points over how much sugar they want in their soft drink. Some will have ideal points over here, some will have ideal points over here. And to make this as simple as possible, let's assume that the consumer ideal points are uniformly distributed across this interval. So that there's the same number of consumers with an ideal point here as there are with an ideal point here. So now we can think about what product characteristics would two firms choose that are strategically choosing those product characteristics. And we can begin by saying, suppose that's the only strategic choice. Suppose that price is not a strategic choice. Price is fixed. And the firms are simply choosing where to locate their product on this interval. Well, in that case, the main goal for the firm is to maximize their market share. If firm one chooses a product characteristic here, firm two is going to best respond by choosing a product characteristic just to the right. Because that way, all the consumers with ideal points over here are going to come to firm two, and firm one's only going to get the consumers over here. But of course, they're not best responding to each other if they do this, because now firm one would want to switch and shift just to the right of firm two, capturing all of these consumers and leaving these to firm two. But then firm two would want to do the same thing again and switch to the other side of firm one. The same thing would happen if firm one chose a product characteristic over here. Firm two would best respond by choosing just to the left, capturing all of these consumers and leaving these to firm one. But then firm, would wanna, firm one would want to switch and so forth. So the only way the two firms will best respond to each other is if they both settle at the midpoint of the interval. If they both settle here, firm one settles here, firm two produces an identical product, then they're going to split the market. If firm two moved to the right, then it would get less than half the market. It, if it moved to the left, it would get less than half the market. The only way to get half the market is to produce exactly the same product that firm one is producing. So the Nash equilibrium in this model then becomes for both firms to settle at the midpoint of that interval. So the curious result, if price is not a strategic variable, and the only strategic variable is to choose your product characteristic, is that there will be no product differentiation. But we know that product differentiation is what allows price competing firms to price above marginal cost. And the more product differentiation there is, the greater they're going to be able to price above marginal cost because the more these are going to diverge and that intersection is going to move up that 45 degree line. So to really think about the strategic choice of product differentiation, we also have to embed that into an environment where firms are choosing price. And the way to do that is to think of a two-stage game. In stage one, firms choose the product characteristic. And in stage two, firms choose price. So you can think of firms playing 
two consecutive simultaneous move games. In the first game, they're choosing the product characteristic, knowing that they're next going to play a game where they're going to choose price. In that case, we would anticipate that firms are going to choose to differentiate their products in stage one because they know what stage two is going to look like. And the more differentiated their products are in stage one, the more they're going to be able to price above marginal cost. So in a game like this, in a sequential game of two simultaneous move games, we would expect that firms maximally differentiate in stage one. So they're not going to choose the midpoint because they know if they maximally differentiate, they're going to have maximal ability in the equilibrium in stage two to price above marginal cost. So they'll maximally, maximally differentiate in stage one in anticipation of softening price competition in stage two.